test, test, test. Good morning, Chin. Good morning, Jenna. Good to see you. Happy Wednesday. Good morning, Belkut. Good morning, Joe. It's overcast, but it's still warm. Uh, morning, how many classes do you teach? Do you, what, do you mean like this semester? This semester I'm teaching three. Good morning, Chimney Stacks. I do road vehicle dynamics. Oh, in an academic year? Nominally five or six. Sheesh. <laughs> it it's all right. I, I enjoy it. I mean the more you do a class, the smoother it gets. It's very hard at the beginning. And it's very hard the second time doing a class. It's also very hard the third time doing a class. But by the fourth or fifth time, it's not as hard. <laughs> Good morning, Hash Brown Swag. See, I have the advantage at this point that I've been through this class like, wait, how many times? Because I was a TA for this class back in the day. Um, and then once, twice. I think this is my fourth, or like uh, you, you could say it's my fifth time through. Hey, good morning, MCAT. And uh, yeah, it just reminds me that like, and there's still stuff that I'm like, I don't know if I understand this entirely so it takes time this is your first time but you guys are doing very very well very 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 well okay the way I want to start this morning is we have some results from the first team project. It's just kind of fun. I had, um, we went through and ranked. Uh, so we're all in the same boat, not understanding everything. Yeah, I think that's the human condition. <laughs> uh, Hash Brown, am I allowed to resubmit the homework after seeing your email yesterday? Wait, what was my email yesterday? Did I send, what did I do yesterday? <laughs> Can't keep track of it. Okay. The mistake in the code along. Oh, 
sure. Wait, because the, the deadline hasn't even passed yet, right? For this homework submission? Oh, yeah, something about in Delta. Isn't our homework due on like Friday or something? You can you can keep resubmitting until the deadline. So of course, yeah. Okay, check this out. Um Yeah, it's Friday when it's due, so you, you can keep resubmitting. Oh, Hank, send us that link on Discord. Okay, we went through the submissions, and this is just for fun. We looked at the teams with the, the fastest times. Actually, I think, because I, I, so I went through the top four after I got this list to like look at the different strategies, because it's fun. Like people did very different things, very different approaches. Uh, but I think group three, I think they're DQ'd. I think they're DQ'd. I mean, or, or this third place group, because I think they had their first gear ratio was like nine or something. But the limit was four or five, right? So I think this group gets third place. Let's check out some strategies. This is fun. So group eight, we had a couple teams under 10 seconds for the quarter mile. Very different strategies. Um, this is their torque curve. These are the gear ratios. So they, they sent that first gear ratio up to the limit. And, um, but yeah, we maximized torque or, or we had max power between 5,000 and 7,000 RPM. Well, everybody like a time of 10, very fast, lots of very fast. Um, let's see. Oh, and this is interesting. Like a lot of groups or, or a couple of these top groups did this. They at 8,000 RPM, which is the max, they brought it back down to zero instead of having some torque and power at that high RPM range. Let's see. So this. That's interesting. That's different. <laughs> we figured that we could completely trash that torque because you upshift before that RPM. Yeah, this is this is this is different because like you here's when you go from first to second gear, like at this intersection, and then you actually start to gain acceleration again. It's uh Okay, so second place, look at this. This was one of our graduate student groups, and they took a um, an optimization approach where they built like a cost function, and they had uh, they built an optimization code and had MATLAB grind on a bunch of different options. And look at this; it only produces torque between a thousand and five thousand RPM. But I feel like, hold on. Okay, and then their gear ratios, this. 4.775, 1.5, A lot of it depends on your gears too. But I feel like this solution, it doesn't, use all of the torque that you could right because i i think i imposed a constraint on the cumulative sum of your torque does this hit that limit 
Is anybody here from this group? It has this interesting uh, acceleration versus road speed curve. Very high initial acceleration. Okay, so this would be this would be second place. Third place, I think it has to be DQ'd. Because look at this gear. 9.3. The maximum gear ratio allowed was five. But look at this. The They don't have any torque in these lower RPM ranges, and then they pump it up for this range. So I think a lot of these groups, or, or some of these top groups, use a strategy where they constrained the RPMs over which they're working and just pumped up the values in there. Okay, this one was different. Group 19 which I, I think we is actually third place if the other group is DQ'd. Um, the gear ratios aren't super extreme. They're kind of like uh, middle of the pack. But this is a totally different approach. Like the... Wait, engine... Wait, isn't this switched? These axes are, or these labels are switched because the blue is the power and the red is the torque. But this one, they kind of expanded the torque over the whole range. Anyways, very different strategies. Still a lot of fast times. Um, it's an interesting problem. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Okay, let's see here. Would using this strategy work for real cars? I'm a bit confused as to how you can't have torque or power for some <laughs> RPMs. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, I see. <laughs> I think it's realistic to... Um, to have low torque at low RPMs. Maybe not have zero, but it's, um, did you test this with your, with your driving simulation? Oh, with mine? No, I haven't double, I haven't double checked. These are kind of taken at, well, the, um, the first part of the project is kind of a gate like all of these groups had a successful simulation of the car that I provided. And so that's kind of just testing the code. So I'm assuming that the codes are um, correct for these lap times. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Ricardo asked, would this strategy work for real cars? I think, okay, so one piece is, it's realistic to have possibly low torque at low RPM, that's that's fine. Uh, at the higher speed ranges, I think this is more just playing with the constraints. Cause um, I give you, Always wondering how do you understand all the knowledge points so well and express it in a simple way on all the course. When I turn to a new field, it's always hard to read a textbook and get information I need by myself. Oh, thank you. That's very, <laughs> that's very kind of you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, um, I try to explain it clear. Don't always do a great job, but um, I spend, I spend a lot of time struggling through the textbook like you do until I bang my head against it enough that I feel like, oh, that makes more sense. And then that's how I explain it. Um, okay. Anyways, anyways, all that to say, 
there's lots of different approaches. I thought it was it, it was cool to read some of these responses and see um, how your strategies changed. Um, and I don't know. I hope you enjoyed working as a team and and just showing the top times. It's just for fun. It's just for fun. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I'm pulling up my cheat sheet for today. Okay. We're talking about tangent speed, characteristic speed, critical speed. All right. So it each of these is, is, is an important way of describing the, the cornering capabilities of a car. And so we'll go through these one by one. It's good to know what these are. And what we're going to do is we're going to define each of these speeds for the BMW M4. So let's talk about the M4 a little bit. I think this is the 2016 M4, maybe. Um, so, okay, it has this mass, it has this wheelbase, 2.81 meters, and 52.6% of the weight is towards the front. So that means the CG is a little bit pushed towards the front tires. And based on that, you have LR, the distance from the CG to the rear axle, <clears throat> and then you also have LF. All right, now these parameters we got an estimate for. Um, last time we looked at this road and track test and we looked at their skid pad results and we made some assumptions, like if it can generate 1.05 Gs of lateral acceleration on a 300 foot diameter skid pad. And if they say that it handles mild understeer, well, I made some assumptions and I calculated, okay, maybe this is a decent estimate of the cornering stiffness at the front and the cornering stiffness at the rear. And just looking at the tires that they put on this vehicle, we noticed that the, the rear tire was a little wider. The sidewall was a little shorter. And I think that does point to a, a tire with a little bit more cornering stiffness. Okay, so we also calculated the understeer gradient. And if the understeer gradient is greater than zero, it uh it indicates that this is an understeer vehicle okay so we're dealing with the m4 it's a, like a mildly understeer car let's talk about what the tangent speed is turn down this music a little bit okay the tangent speed is the speed at which the nose of the vehicle is aligned with the vehicle's velocity vector um, so that means the body x vector is aligned with the velocity vector of the cg with respect to the inertial origin so i'm just bringing that notation back um 
Okay, so it's the speed at which the nose is aligned with the velocity vector while cornering a constant radius corner at constant speed. So to, to restate that, in other words, the tangent speed is the speed at which a vehicle corners with no steady state side slip. Because side slip is the angle between the body longitudinal vector and the velocity. So we're saying at tangent speed, these are aligned. So let's look at some pictures. Okay. Okay, yeah, so it turns out that if you're driving below your vehicle's tangent speed, you're going to have a nose out orientation into a corner. And if you're driving above your tangent speed, you're going to have a nose in orientation. So let's look at these. This is the BMW M4. It's making a right corner. And this is what I mean when I say nose out. It's turning to the right and um, its nose is pointing out of the corner. So the side slip angle, I know I always confuse myself on this, but it's measured from that longitudinal axis to the velocity vector. And if it is clockwise from above, that's a positive side slip. So, um, if you're making a right turn, if you are nose out, that means that your side slip is positive. If you were making a left turn and you were nose out, this would reverse, but you, you can use the same kind of reasoning. In that case, the side slip would be, would be less than zero. So this is what your car is gonna look like below its tangent speed. It's gonna be nose out of a corner, and this is kind of a maybe a little bit of an extreme drawing, but. Okay, so now, if you're above your tangent speed, navigating the same corner, you're gonna be nose in. So in this case, that side slip is negative because it's um, a counterclockwise angle from above. So if you're making a right turn, nose in, side slip is less than zero. And this is what you look like above your tangent speed. If you were doing this at the tangent speed, and I didn't have, I didn't make another figure for this, but you can imagine what it would look like. There'd be no side slip, meaning this longitudinal body vector would be right on top of that velocity vector. And it's kind of like you're always pointing tangent to the circle. All right, now here's an interesting thing, which I found it hard to believe. So this, okay, interestingly, the tangent speed is independent of the steer angle. Um, and well, we should make the caveat here, like we're doing a linearized analysis. We simplified some things. So one of the simplifications we made is we assume that this is for small steer angles, maybe like less than three degrees, something like that. But what this means is regardless of the radius you're cornering, the tangent speed is always the same. So let's say I'm taking a pretty tight corner if I'm going at a velocity, say it's 20 miles per hour, which is my, say that's my tangent speed, then my nose will be pointed directly on the contour of that radius. If I was driving on a much larger radius at that same speed, my nose will be aligned with the radius even then, which it's a little counterintuitive, maybe, I don't know, maybe not. But for me, I, I figured that the tangent speed, like the speed at which you're aligned with your velocity vector, I thought it would depend on um, how much lateral acceleration you're experiencing. Because if you're going at the same speed on a tighter radius, there's more lateral acceleration. 
Um, so let, let's unpack this a little bit. So we can derive what the tangent speed is going to be by using some of the equations we've been working with. All right, so at your tangent speed, the steady state side slip angle is gonna be zero. So here's our side slip angle beta. Steady state is, what is that gonna be as time goes to infinity? If you use the final value theorem, limit as S approaches zero of um, S times beta of S. So this is our side slip in the Laplace domain. Um, we've been calling this result a beta star. So when I put a star next to something, it means what is that variable at steady state as time marches toward infinity? We saw that this was the steady state value of our transfer function, which I called G beta times whatever our fixed steer angle is. So all this is saying is that my side slip in my vehicle, so the angle the, the angular difference between my nose and the velocity vector is gonna be um, um, whatever my steer angle is times times this. So the only way that my side slip can be zero is number one, if my steer angle is zero, but that's not the case we're talking about. We're talking about we are cornering, so there has to be some steer. So the only way that this can be zero is if, if that factor is zero. And if that factor is zero, it doesn't matter what my steer angle is, the side slip will always be zero at steady state. So that's kind of where this tangent speed comes from that at the tangent speed, it doesn't matter what the steering is, the steady state value of my side slip is gonna go to zero because it depends on this term that's gonna be always zero. So this is what that G beta expression is. So at the tangent speed, this will be zero. So what I did in here, V sub T is tangent speed. And so you see that term pops up in here a couple times. So if this is gonna go to zero, the numerator must be zero. So at tangent speed in delta yr minus mvt, y delta n r, that's got to go to zero. So be careful though, because you, you see vt just shows up once here, right? So you might think, okay, I'll, I'll just solve for vt and then I'm done. But it's a little trickier because this yr and nr these are these are actual um, well these are functions of the vehicle velocity as well. I can't remember exactly what the expressions are, but it has like one over v times like something. So if you substitute in oh here we go. So in delta is this y r is this so, so yeah that's where the vt comes up it's in the denominator um y delta is just this and then n r is this stuff so okay when we expand that out now we have some other vt terms okay so now we're gonna we're gonna grind through this a little bit so if we multiply everything by VT, that'll cancel some things out, right? And then 
everything's multiplied by C alpha F, the front cornering stiffness. So we can divide by that as well. Um, let's see, what are we going to get? Okay. Actually, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to skip a couple lines. But you'll get this C alpha R times L R times L F plus L R minus M times the tangent velocity squared times L F equals zero. And if you add these two together, that's L, the, the total wheelbase. And now, now we can solve for the speed. So the tangent speed for a vehicle, the speed where its nose is pointed along the velocity vector is this. So it depends on how heavy your car is, how long its wheelbase is, how the weight is distributed, and how grippy your rear tires are. So cornering stiffness is some like measure of how grippy it is. So how about we calculate what this speed is for the M4? We'll just use this formula that we created. Okay. Tangent speed for BMW M4. Okay, we got the wheelbase, 2.81 meters. We divide by the mass. I'm going to do everything in SI units here. 1630 kilograms. LR is 1.48 meters. LF is 1.33 meters. And then our estimated rear cornering stiffness is 91,177 radians per meter per second squared. Or wait, uh, does this equation change if it is a four-wheel drive vehicle? No. No, it doesn't. Um, wait, I just, I have the wrong units here. Let me get back to that question really quick. This should be uh, Newtons per radian. I don't know what I was writing. Does this equation change if it's four wheel drive? No, because th this is assuming that the vehicle is at a steady state, meaning it's constant velocity. And um, so whether you had a rear wheel drive or four wheel drive at the point of steady state we're talking about you have already done the work of getting up to this speed and you're not applying any like extra thr the only throttle you're applying is to maintain this constant speed yeah i think you're getting at like why is it that only the rear tire is like showing up here and it's a little yeah, just plug this into the homework code and it checks out. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. Um, if you if you do this, so for the M4, it's 13.21 meters per second, which is 29.5 miles per hour, like almost 30 miles per hour. Now, this is the crazy part. So I want to show you two plots down here. I'm going to drive at this tangent speed in the M4, and I'm going to apply very different steering inputs. So we're cornering on, when you're steering this much, you're on a very tight radius. And when you're on this one, you're on a, like a, a wider radius circle. So let's look at, well, let's look at one degree of steering first. That's here on the left. And here, I have two lines on here. The blue line, which is the most important one, 
for tangent speed, this is the side slip angle, beta. And if you look like really, really close, when you initialize this turn, there's a little bit of side slip, but then it goes back to zero at steady state. So the limit as time goes to infinity of our side slip is zero. This yaw rate, R, in degrees per second, that's just indicating that our vehicle is navigating a corner. It's rotating. Okay, so we're going at the tangent speed, so like 30 miles per hour in the M4. What if I crank the steering quite a bit more? So now we got five degrees. Okay, initially, when we just start to initialize this, we get some non-zero side slip, but then it works its way back towards zero and it happens quickly, like over half a second, we're already back to zero side slip. So it's a, uh, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. Wait, let's go to MATLAB really quick. Guys, I worked on, you know how we made a code that does an animation? So I worked on mine a little bit and it looks even cooler now because I added like skid lines and stuff. Um, wait, I'm just fixing something. At our tangent speed. Let's see what I want to do. We'll do one degree of steering. Let's run this. Is this going to work? Okay, so we're we're doing one degree of steering at the tangent speed. And Oh, these these lines I put out in front, this shows the steering angle a little bit like the darker line is where the tire is pointed and the red line is where um, just the axis of the vehicle is pointed so there's a little bit of a difference so I'm steering one degree to the right um, if I do let's do five degrees of steering so it should be a tighter radius but I still shouldn't have any side slip That's the tangent speed. Kind of just like perfectly navigating that circle. 30 miles per hour. Okay. We're going to come back to this because some of these speeds are going to introduce some side slip and it looks a little more interesting. Okay, so yeah, the takeaway is the side slip is zero, regardless of the steering. The yaw rate, the lateral acceleration, depending on the steering, those are very different. But if you're navigating at the tangent speed, steady state side slip is zero. Um, there we go. Let's talk about characteristic speed. This is a different one. Now the characteristic speed is only for understeer vehicles. It's not for neutral steer. It's not for, it's certainly not for oversteer. Okay, the characteristic speed is the speed at which an understeer car, your car, whatever you're driving right now, that's definitely understeer. Uh, the car produces the maximum yaw rate per steer angle. So if you're driving at 20 miles per hour, you introduce one degree of steering, that'll cause your car to yaw at some certain rate. The 
at different speeds that one degree of steering is going to generate different yaw rates uh, the, the general rule is that the faster you're going the more yaw is going to be introduced by steering but that only is true up to a limit once you go past the characteristic speed, you're actually going to get less yaw per steer angle. So we'll show that. Um, okay, so it's the speed at which you have maximum yaw rate per steer angle. But it's also used as a measure for the amount of understeer that a car has. So th this is how it's a measure for that the lower the characteristic speed of a vehicle the more understeer that car is and just to give you like a figure the characteristic speed of most passenger cars is somewhere like ballpark. It's probably 40 to 50 miles per hour, maybe a little higher. So around 40 or 50 miles per hour, that's when you're going to get most yaw per steering in your typical passenger vehicle. The lower that speed is, the more understeer that car is. The higher that speed is, the more neutral steer. Maybe the more sporty your car is, a little better at cornering. Okay, so just like we did for the tangent speed, we're going to try to get a general expression for the characteristic speed of an understeer vehicle. And we're going to have to do a little bit more work, but it's, it's the same kind of idea here. So what we're going to start with, we're going to start with an expression for the steady state yaw rate. So R is our yaw rate. As time goes to infinity, that's what steady state means. So this is just final value theorem, the S domain. So here's our steady state yaw rate, R star. And it's related to our steering by this transfer function at steady state. So mathematically, the characteristic speed so it's the speed where we get, get most yaw per steering. So it's the speed at which this ratio is maximized. For some steering, I get more yaw. And this is what that function is. So basically, we want to make this as big as we can. And that's, that's how we'll find the... Um, characteristic speed all right first thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify this expression so i'm giving you this first line if you substitute in for all of these parameters i mean they're functions of speed cornering stiffness blah 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 you're going to get this so this is just rewriting that expression, except in terms of the tires, the wheelbase, the velocity, and so on. And then, all right, we're going to do some work with this. The first thing I want to do, I want to, like, make this term equal to 1. So if I multiply the bottom by, like, the inverse of that, V divided by C alpha F, C alpha R L squared... So that's going to like cancel with this term and make it one. But I have to do the same thing to the top. So if we do this. Okay, so this will be equal to. So looking at the top. Let's see, this will cancel with this. This L will cancel with one of those L's. So I'm going to get V over L on the top. And then on the bottom, just as we designed this, this first term is going to go to 1. 
And then this one's going to become C alpha R L R minus C alpha F L F over C alpha R C alpha F. And then I'm going to break this up a little bit times M over L. And I'm doing this for a reason. Okay, times M over L times V squared over L. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay, this is why I broke up the denominator in this way. This term right here, this is the mathematical definition of the understeer gradient which we just abbreviate as ug so if you're an understeer vehicle ug is going to be greater than zero if you're oversteer ug is going to be less than zero if you're neutral steer ug is precisely equal to zero so if we account for that and we know the understeer gradient of the BMW M4, or at least we guessed it. We made an educated guess. Okay, UG over L times V squared. So that's just simplifying this accounting for the understeer gradient. Now this term is used in vehicle dynamics. We have the understeer gradient, but it's also popular to use the understeer gradient divided by L. And this is defined as the stability factor of a vehicle. You take the understeer gradient and you divide it by L, and that's called the vehicle's stability factor. Um, and we use the variable capital K. So capital K... By definition, that's what that triangle equals means. It's the understeer gradient divided by L, which is the wheelbase, the distance from front axle to rear axle. Okay, so this gives us our final expression for this ratio of the steady state yaw rate to the steady state steer angle. Well, it's V over L plus 1 plus the stability factor times V squared. So what I want to do next is plot this ratio for the BMW M4. So I, I just did that in MATLAB, and I have the plot down here. So I'm plotting this ratio for the M4 as a function of speed. So yeah, this axis is steady state yaw rate per steer angle. On this axis is my speed. And you see that generally as you go faster, you get more yaw per, um, per steer angle that you put in. But that maxes out, it looks like right about here. And th the speed at which this is maximized is the characteristic velocity. So let's say it's just looking at this, it looks like somewhere around 90 miles per hour. So here's our max GR. So whereas I said like most passenger cars this maxes out around like 50 miles per hour for the m4 it's more like 90 miles per hour and like a sportier car it's probably going to be a higher speed now uh, for a car that maxes out around 40 miles per hour it generally has a smaller peak too so it looks something like this so Usually a car with a lower characteristic velocity, it just generally has, um, you have to steer more to generate as much yaw. You don't have as much, you don't have a 
a, a very big ratio here. Okay, so, all right, this is we're running a little low on time. How much? Okay, yeah, we'll we'll wrap this up next time. But before I leave, let me ask you this. How are we going to derive an expression for that maximum point here? I guess you can you can look ahead in the handout. Oh wait, let me show you um let me give you a preview of something here. I want to show you what I did with my with my code. I added like these skid lines. Um, wait, I want to do. All right, give me a second. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero. Thank you, Ricardo. That is the answer I was looking for. If you want to solve for an expression for this characteristic speed, you need to take the derivative of this ratio with respect to velocity. When you get that derivative, that's the slope of this line. The maximum is going to happen when the slope is zero. And we're going to get a very elegant expression for the characteristic velocity. All right, let's run this really quick. Okay, I think this is, yeah, this is low speed. I think I was still, I think this is still at the tangent speed. And now I'm doing a sinusoidal steering pattern. So you can see like the steer angles changing. I'm steering to the left and then I'm working my way back to center. Let's pump up the speed though. Um, okay, hold on. We're gonna go, we're gonna pump up the speed to 80 miles per hour. Oops. Okay, now we're going 80 miles per hour. Oh, actually this doesn't look as good. It's making dots. We need lines. We need solid lines to indicate skidding. This is not cool. That's not cool. All right. We got to fix that really quick. There we go. You can see that the front tire, so the way I decided to introduce skidding is if the slip angle at the tire gets bigger than like six degrees. So the maximum lateral force is made around like six degrees of slip. But if you go beyond that slip angle, the tire starts to like slide a little bit. So all I did in my code is I calculated the front and the rear slip angles at the tires. And I made this if statement. If the absolute value of the slip angle is greater than six, then draw a trace of where the front tire has been. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a more extreme thing. I keep switching because I'm hiding my I'm hiding my proprietary code from you. 
it's very top secret as you can see um okay this is what i'm doing and this is what we're gonna do um friday but we're gonna inflate the rear tires so much that the cornering stiffness goes down when you over inflate your tires the cornering stiffness the grip actually reduces so we're going to do that to the rear tires and we're going to make this more oversteer and i'm going to go 80 miles per hour and we're going to see what the heck happens to this vehicle and we start to drift <laughs> And actually, yeah, both the front and rear tires are saturating. But notice the rear, the rear tire starts to skid a little bit before the front. Like the rear tire is going to... Oh, maybe the front tire did it that time. All right, let's, let's pump up the speed. And then we're going to do this one more time. And then, and then that'll, that'll be it. Um, just because this is really fun. Tokyo Drift. I know, we need, we need to change the music. Where's my music? Oh, this is better at least. Okay, we need to pump up the speed a little bit. Boom. But I, I'm creating more side slip by reducing the cornering stiffness of the rear. Yeah, that's fun now using the code like because we we worked on this code together a couple maybe a week or two ago angle between two dotted lines is the side slip oh no the the angle between the dotted lines is just the just for the steer angle let me run it one more time because i think even some counter steering happens here uh let me see So it's turning to the right. The black line is where the tire is pointed. So now the black tire is pointed to the, I mean, it's pointed to the left. Now it, it's going to the right again. And that's kind of counter steering right there. It, it looked like it was in the left corner, but like now it's counter steering. Yeah, I don't know. I spent like an hour with this last night because I was just like, this is too fun. It's kind of fun. So we'll play with this more on Friday um, because the critical speed is related to this. It's for an oversteer car. It's the speed at which your car goes totally unstable. So I think in this configuration that I made, it's around 130 miles per hour. And I'm not totally sure what's going to happen if I do that. What if I go up to 129 miles per hour? Yeah, it, it doesn't look, it looks weird. It's, 
It's just going like, <laughs> you're just entirely sliding to the side. Yeah. MATLAB animation is, it's in fact quite fun. Yeah, I, I agree. I, there's a lot that you can do with this. Um, that's it for today, my friends. We'll be back here again Friday. We'll play more with this. We'll talk about critical speed. I'm going to create the next group project. I'm going to try to get that out like Friday or something. But it's going to be related to this stuff. It'll be a team project. And you'll be playing with, with some of these characteristics on a vehicle. So, hey, have a great day, Barry Blow. Same groups? No. I know some of you love your groups to death, but we're we're gonna we're gonna randomize it again. Hey, have a good one. Watch that video when you get a free moment. Did you put it up on Discord? Oh, you did. Wait, what is this? This looks like a professional uh, like YouTube. Video. Sorry. Who is this? You're in this video? Frank, where are you in this? Oh, wait, that's you! I started with brakes, what? wheel suspension, um, points on Fortune Auto 500 with uh, switch lift springs. Everywhere else there is a uh, hot urethane uh, bushings. So um, you swapped a 1J and one big turbo on this. Yeah, it was, I got the whole setup right out of, a, from a buddy and uh, he had his car ended up getting wrecked. So I bought everything from him. So just a chassis swap. Correct, pretty much, okay. yeah. I ended up finishing the swap. Uh, it was during my winter break from school. We, me and my friends would get up every, every morning at 6 a.m. and work till 12 a.m. every night and okay. put it back together, got in the car, um, went and go took it for a ride and saw some guy getting, taking a video. I was like, oh, okay. So I dropped second and blew it up. Okay. Brought, I've like, been there. That's a Ferretti move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. yeah, I mean, it was yeah. Nice yeah. the camera. If I blow out my engine, it's racing a motorcycle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, you expressed concern about opening the engine bay because it was potentially dirty. Yes. Which it looks okay, this is, this is me, sweet. I'll have to check out I the... I do see a cause for concern, which is compiled with zip ties and electrical Okay, tape. so this is what... this is. Your where... battery is held together by zip ties. Okay, hold on. It's actually a zip tie holding another zip, zip tie. tie. What happened there? What happened there, Frank? I mean, Hank? Jeez, why am I calling you Frank? Just oh holding God. another zip tie <laughs> to a series of zip ties. Let me, let me explain this. So I, <laughs> let, uh, me, let me explain. Like, I, I know that there's zip ties holding my car together. Uh, but uh, let me uh, just just wait. Please Last tell me week. of zip tie engine mounts. Too. No, no, this bad girl. This, OK, this is this is not a very good uh, expression of what the car is about. Um, <laughs> I went last Wednesday. I went to the drag strip for um, for a class, actually. I mean, that's uh, yeah, OK. And um, <laughs> not for drive, a class. A couple of runs that day. It was a good, good day. Then that next Saturday, I drove two hours to Erie, Pennsylvania, drifted it for the first time all day. Now, I awesome. didn't have a battery tie down. Uh -huh. um, the battery tie down for the car is just this little metal bracket. They didn't accept that. Right. Okay. So immediately, I think they, they accepted, accepted that. This? Exactly. <laughs> it was drifting. It's drifting. I Zip ties are inspection. acceptable in drifting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm rooting for this one the most. Yeah. Thank you. That's now, we, we do have the fact that you drove it down from Buffalo. Wait, are you doing a race? That's amazing. Oh, next episode? Oh, this is so cool. Okay, I'll have to watch the I'll have to watch the rest of this. Dude, that's <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me uh, let me explain. Zip ties. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um That's really really cool, Hank. <laughs> I'm glad you could do that. That's fun. All right, guys, it worked. Yeah, I mean, it, you're an engineer. You got to you got to do what works. <laughs>
All right, guys. Have a great Wednesday. I'll see you Friday.